All right, uh, we are talking about uh, managing human resource in healthcare setting. Our focus is going to be uh, on the hospitals and some of the organizations <coughs> that are implementing health intervention programs in the country. So by the end of this presentation, uh, you'll be able to demonstrate an awareness of uh, regulatory requirements and ethical considerations in healthcare human resource management. Uh, develop effective strategies for recruiting and selecting qualified healthcare professionals, uh, assess the ongoing training and development needs of healthcare professionals, and lastly, identify and analyze the distinctive HR challenges specific to healthcare uh, industry. So having looked at the objectives, I want us now to look at the definition of human resource management in the context of healthcare management. So human resource management is the process of managing people. We are talking about the doctors, we are talking about the midwives, the nurses, and the other healthcare workers in the hospital settings or in an organization which is implementing health intervention programs. So our focus for this module is basically uh, the, the hospitals and the, the NGOs which are dealing with the health. So it's very essential for an organization to have an element of human resource management in place to make sure that the patients receive the care they deserve. Otherwise, if the organization does not manage the nurses, the doctors, the midwives, the patients will be the one to suffer. Uh, the quality of the care given to the patients depends on how we treat those healthcare workers. So in the hospital setting, we also have support staff, the, the administrators. Their role is basically to ensure that the hospital is running smoothly, and also to make sure that uh, it is marketed if it is a, a private hospital. And then we also have the, the drivers or the logistics which, uh, which helps in the movement of uh, uh, goods or drugs, hospital equipment, or even transportation of patients from the hospital to their places or from their homes to the facility. So basically that's about uh, the definition of human resource management within the healthcare setting. Basically, our focus is on the health workers. So having looked at the definition of uh, human resource management, now let us look at uh, the evolution or the evolution of human resource management, how it started. So our focus is going to be on the approaches of managing human resources in those eras. So the evolution of human resource can be divided into several eras, each characterized by different approaches to managing the workforce. Uh, these eras include uh, the pre-industrial revolution era, uh, the industrial revolution era, the emergence of personnel management, uh, the relations era, and finally uh, the contemporary era, which where we are currently. So that is the focus of the evolution of human resource management. So we are beginning with the pre-industrial revolution era, uh, that is the before the 18th uh, century. So our focus is going to be the characteristics how human resource is managed during uh, the pre-industrial revolution. So in this era, there was no concept of job specialization and workers were expected to, to be much skilled. It means you can do whatever your boss wages or salary were very low and then working conditions were very poor. Okay. Employers had no legal obligation to provide their employees a safe working environment or any other benefit. So the boss can decide not to pay you a salary. The boss can decide to fire without any reason. The boss can give you whatever kind of treatment he or she feels like because there was no any legal obligation for him or her to do so. So in that characteristic, we're looking at the informal labor arrangement. So by then there was no formal labor arrangements. So we also have the nature of compensation, which is butter based. It means we don't have monetary ways of compensating employees. That means uh, by the end of the month, you don't expect to get money or cash, but the organization can give you maybe uh, an item, a physical item. For example, maybe if you're working in a factory, they can decide to give a, a box or even a bar of washing shop as your compensation. And then the other person might end up getting uh, maybe salt, a, a bag of salt, things like that. So generally, there was no monetary system of compensation during the pre-industrial revolution era. The next characteristic is that uh, personal relationships govern work arrangements. Okay, 
Your relationship with the boss governed the work arrangement because we've said that there was no legal system to take care of the employees. So the more you impress the owner of the organization or your boss, the more you'll be comfortable working in that organization. But if your relationship is not good with the owners of the organizations, it means uh, you are going to be either fired or you are going to be badly treated in the organization. So the last characteristic of the Industrial Revolution era is that there was minimum formal HR structures. In actual world, we are saying that uh, there was no a structure of human resource management during the pre-industrial revolution era. So these are some of the characteristics of the revolution era during the 18th century as far as human resource management is concerned. The next stage is what you call the industrial revolution and human resource, which is from 18th, 19th century. So here, the revolution brought about the significant changes to the world of work and had a profound impact on the evolution of human resource management. So we talk about the rise of factories and introduction of new technology. It means when the factories are coming up, that means the nature of work, of course, changes. You need more workforce to do the work. One person cannot manage the whole work in the factory. That's where the element of human resource management began. It began because of the Industrial Revolution. So the characteristic is that one, uh, emergence of factories and mass production. People are now producing commodities uh, on large scale. It means there was need to employ more people. And what happens if more people are employed and organized, it means you need a department uh, to, to, to manage or to handle them. That's how the human resource is now evolving. The next characteristic is the formalization of work structures and hierarchies. So when you talk of hierarchies, we're talking about who reports to who, okay, also who is to be supervised. That's what we mean by the hierarchy by then. Then the formalization is that uh, the structure of the work, th there was an element of uh, specialization now. So when you come to work, you know what you are supposed to do. That's what we mean by formalization of uh, work structure, unlike the pre-industrial revolution whereby there was no uh, element of specialization. You are supposed to be multi-task during the pre-industrial revolution era. But here, there was formalization of work structure. You know what you are going to be doing for the next three or four years. The last characteristic uh, the, of industrial revolution is that uh, under industrial revolution is that uh, the basic labor management practice was introduced. When you talk of the basic labor management class, we are talking about uh, taking attendance or record, uh, supervising employees whenever they are doing the work, and also um, processing their payment. These are some of the basic labor management practices during the Industrial Revolution era of 18th to 19th uh, century. So the next stage in the evolution of human resource management is uh, the emergence of personnel management uh, in 20th century. So personnel management is the same as uh, the human resource management. Actually, in some of the organizations, they don't have the human resource department, but what they have is the personnel uh, department. So during this period, the evolution of human resource management practices became more formalized, and there was a growing emphasis on compliance with the labor laws and the regulations. So personnel managers were responsible for maintaining records handling employee grievances and ensuring the organization complied with the, uh, complied with the labor standards. So it means now there was no mistreatment of the employees, unlike in the previous eras whereby we saw that uh, the, the, the owner or the boss has no legal obligation to uh, take good care of the employees. But in this era, the owners are supposed to comply with the government regulations to make sure that uh, the welfare of the employees are taken care of. So, basic characteristics of the emergence of personnel management in 20th century is one, uh, there was establishment of personnel departments, or what you can call now uh, human resource management. It means human resource management officially started in 20th uh, century. The next one is uh, that was focused on administrative tasks. When talk of administrative tasks, we are talking about uh, hiring employees. We are talking about 
uh, payroll uh, preparation, even controlling employee or even uh, uh, dismissing or firing employees were well, some of the tasks under administrative work during the 20th century as far as the evolution of human resource management is concerned. The last characteristics of this stage is that uh, compliance-driven practices. Uh, the organizations were now able to comply with the regulations concerning uh, the human resource practices in the country. So that is how the characteristic or the approaches were during the 20th century evolution of human resource management. Having looked at that, we are still continuing with the stages of the human resource uh, evolution, which is now the human relation era. The human relation era began in 1930s to 1950s. So when talk of the relation era is all about the relationship between the organization and the employees. So the practice during the human relations era focused on building relationships between managers and employees and fostering a sense of community and belonging in the workplace. Uh, training and development programs were introduced to help employees develop new skills and advance in their careers and management practices were designed to promote employee engagement and the satisfaction. So it's all about uh, socialization. When you come at workplace, you need to feel you are at home. You need to feel that you belong to the team. So that's when uh, the relation between the, the, the organization and the, and the employers became a priority. So up to now, we still have that element of uh, building good relationship with the employers. Because you never know, today, you may leave the organization, then they may end up calling you back for the work. So if your relationship is not all that well, it means uh, uh, they might not call you back because of what you have been doing when you were employed by the organization. So let's look at some of the characteristics. One is the emphasis on social factors uh, in the workplace. Like I've told you before, it's all about uh, socialization and then the well-being of the employees in an organization. Then it marked the beginning of employee-focused management. So the organization was now uh, focusing more on the employee. Uh, that's when we have the welfare program in place, we have the employee training in place, and we have also uh, what we can call a uh, refresher training being given to the employees. So these are all what we call employee focus. In other words, you can call it uh, employee-centered uh, management, and it is what is working now. As human resource manager, as healthcare administrators, you need to make sure that you are employee-focused. But if you're not employee-centered and you're working in a private hospitals, of course, uh, the performance will go down in terms of the commitment of the doctors, the nurse, the midwives, because you are not managing them uh, effectively. So these are some of the characteristics uh, of human relations era from 1930s to 1950s. Uh, the last one now is the strategic human resource management, which is now uh, the 1980. So in the 1980s, the strategic human resource management uh, emerged. This is all about now the long term, the relationship, the retention of the employees in an organization. No organization wants to encourage what you can call high uh, labor turnover rate. It is very expensive in terms of uh, finances and also it has a lot of risks. The people you are losing, they go with the experience, the skills. But the one you are going to hire, you never know, might not be performing uh, the way those one who had left. So it's very risky uh, for you to, to, to lose people all the time. As a human resource manager, you need to make sure that at least you need to retain or uh, minimize the rate of uh, labor turnover in an organization. So what are the characteristics? One is the human resource as a strategic partner in business planning. So when you talk of a strategic partner in business planning, the owners does not only think about uh, expansion of the business alone. They involve the human resource planning. If you are the administrator or a manager here in Juba, you are planning to open up another hospital in Wow as a branch. You need the human resource partner. You need the human resource to be in your planning process. They will help you a lot in terms of recruitment. They will help you a lot in terms of uh, minimizing cost related to personnel. Okay. The next characteristic is uh, talent management became, <coughs> becomes a priority. 
Uh, talent management is all about uh, making sure that the best employees in an organization are kept within the organization and then they are taken for further training so that they become uh, a potential asset to the organization. Then lastly, integration of technology into human resource processes. So we have the human resource information management system which most organizations are using in today's uh, world to make sure that uh, their human resource activities are streamlined. So that is when the strategic uh, human resource management became uh, very, very crucial in the management of an organization, not only uh, the, the hospital level or the healthcare organization, but generally all the organizations are now employing technology to make sure that uh, their human resource activities are streamlined. So basically, these are some of the stages uh, in the evolution of human resource management. Now, having looked at the evolutions and the stages of human resource management, I want us now to look at the objectives of human resource management. One is to attract and retain a competent and diverse workforce. So by attracting and retaining competent and diverse workforce, it means you need to be very careful in terms of recruitment. You need to know the person you are recruiting and also his or her qualification. Otherwise, if you do not know, then you are making a very big mistake. You are going to recruit someone who is not going to perform, is going to mess up, and then the organization at the end of the day suffers. For people in the hospital, if you recruit a doctor who is not qualified, what will happen? Of course, the patients will be dying. The rate of recovery will be very low, but the rate of death will be extremely high. That means your recruitment is actually questionable. Okay. The next objective of human resource management is to develop and maintain a high performance work environment. <coughs> human resource is all about performance. Doctors, the nurses, the midwives, they are supposed to be doing their work. But if they are not doing their work, it means the organization is not performing. Okay? So the objective of the human resource it, is to make sure that each and every individual in that organization is doing their best. The next one is to ensure compliance with the legal and regulatory requirements. We have the labor law, uh, which is, I think, uh, is what I can call the, the, the guideline or the constitution for managing human resources in a country. Every country has labor law. So I want you to, to, to revise or to read the labor law of your country to know some of the requirements in it. The next one is to promote a culture of safety and quality patient care. Okay? The talk of safety is applying to both the employees and also to the patients. Whenever the patients are brought to the facility, they're supposed to be taking good care of. Their health is supposed to be uh, a priority. Their safety is a priority. So that priority comes in through the Department of the Human Resource. By making sure that the doctors who are working on those patients are qualified, by making sure that the Ascaris who are uh, at the gate, they're qualified, they know what they're doing, etc. The last one is to foster employee well-being and satisfaction. <coughs> the employee we are talking about are the doctors, the midwives. How do we make sure that they are, they are satisfied with the job they are doing? Okay? A job satisfaction is basically a situation whereby someone is contented with the job he or she is doing. The person has the knowledge, that person will be satisfied. Even the tools they are using. Okay? You are using a computer which takes about five, five, five hours to open. Are you satisfied with that job even if they give you more than five million dollars? Okay? You will not be satisfied. You are just there because of the money but not because of the job because you know the computer is disappointing you. You are a doctor. The x-ray machine takes very long to read results. Okay? The microscope, take, everything is not good. It means you are not going to be satisfied. So how does that uh, concern the human resource? It concerns the human resource because that person will be thinking of leaving the organization. However much you are paying him well, the person will still leave the organization because of the stress, the technology, the stress, the tools he is using is giving to him. Otherwise, uh, we are having power blackout here and my computer is actually going off. So I want to end this presentation here. Uh, we shall continue later. But tomorrow, at the same time, we are going to have a presentation on uh, managing performance performance in healthcare setting. So for now, I want to stop here and then maybe take a few questions before uh, I conclude the topic.